Hey guys, I'm back. I'm back. Um, so with this one, um, we are going to talk about um, the continue our lecture. So let me share the screen here. Uh, it's right here. Okay. Sure. Good. So with this one, we are going to talk about the um, the DNA. So we kind of. Uh, from the you know uh, the the issue about human genetics moving down to here that the mechanism causing those uh, observations and so with this one we will talk about what caused DNA damage and what caused the repair in our DNA. So those, that's those. So before we talk about that specific issue, I want to kind of overview the, the basis of the DNA. And so we have another under another overview of this very amazing uh, piece of the material in our body, as well as getting into more depth into how these material conduct its uh, gene. We earlier, last time we talked about the gene expression. This time we are going to talk about this DNA replication. And then we will talk about how this could involve in the DNA damage and the repair. So first first is that what is DNA? You should already know. So basically DNA, because this is being addressed in the very first lecture that DNA is a polymer, is a nucleic acid. And uh, the and the um the, the monomer is the nucle nucleotide. So this is a nucleotide. This is a deoxyribose sugar with one phosphate group and a nitrogenous base. So this is a nucleotide. And uh, um, we have four different nitrogenous base uh, that give us uh, this code to code for the gene. And this the gene space can be classified into two groups. One is called purine group. The other one is called uh, uh, pyrimidine, pyrimidines group. So purine group, you can see that it has two rings um a six membered ring and a five membered ring attached to each other so this is a purine group there are some variety over here and make it a quinine and adenine quinine quinine and uh, adenine and the uh, pyrimidine group, we have this cytosine and uh, thymine. And so that's the, um, the nitrogenous base to provide the code. Another uh, important part is the position of this connection. So the position is numbered on the sugar part, on the deoxyribose or on the ribose. So we, ne we, we number the car carbon, carbon uh, the first will be the one, the first one. So if we kind of like, this is a ring structure, if we open it, it will be, this will be the first one. And um, that's the uh, uh, COOH right here. 
So, so that's the first one, C. After the O, if we open it, this will be the first one, second, third, four, and the five. If this is the ribose, it's again, it's a oxygen here. If we open it, it will be first one, second, three, four, five. So that's the position. And the very important is that the phosphate attached to the five, five position, phosphate attached to the five position. And uh, um, so that is one single nucleotide phosphate is at the five position. This is called five prime, three prime, two prime, one prime, four prime. Okay, that's how we call it. Phosphate attached to five. Now, if we have a second phosphate, where is that second, not second phosphate? If we have the second nucleotide, because these nucleotides will be formed together to form this polymer, right? So if we have the second nucleotide, it has to be connected. How is that connected? Where does it connect it? It's connected to here is O and here. So that's where it's gonna connect it. So we can take a look right here. So this one is one nucleotide, five prime connect with the phosphate. Now here, three, third one, three prime. O connect with another phosphate. Basically, this is a, a dehydration synthesis. Uh, this will be the uh, an OH gonna be uh, H2O will be uh, released, and uh, the O binds with it, and uh, that's the phosphate of the second one. So this is the first nucleotide. This is the second nucleotide. So and that's how we connect it, and uh, connect to the end. We will see that this is the end of this nucleotide and the third one third position OH does not connect to anything else so that's the beginning and that is the end and because the beginning we have the five prime with the phosphate that I suppose if there's a furthermore it will connect to that but if there's no it will be the first one and the end is the, and everyone else, in the, you know, from the beginning to the second to the last, we will have the third prime connects to the next nucleotide. Third prime, three prime connects to the next nucleotide. Three prime connects to the next nucleotide. And the last one, the three prime, does not connect to anything. So the direction of a sequence is called to begin at the five prime toward the three prime. So that's the direction. So DNA, RNA is all the same. It's all directional. It, it's all begin from the five prime. So the way we read it or the way that our cell read it is from the five prime to the three prime. If we make a code, do you see AT, AT, T, AT? We may see it this way because in three dimensional space, that sequence can be, you know, floating around. We don't know that which one is the first. It's really hard to tell, right? You flip over, flip over, it looks the same. And then what identified the head, what identified the tail is, three prime and five prime. It will start at five prime or end at the three prime. So that's the direction of the RNA, DNA, direction of the nucleic acid. So it's that. And uh, we also know that, so here is the chain right so that is this chain this chain 
this chain is connected, basically connected with the phosphate and uh, and uh, hydrogen, right? C, the C, O, H, hydrogen, hydrogen, O, H. Sugar, I mean, sugar and the phosphate connect with the sugar and the, the phosphate, right? So this is the known that phosphate and the sugar build these phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. So that is the connection. Phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. So this sugar phosphate provide the backbone of the DNA chain. So nucleotides uh, join to form this long poly polymer via the chemical bond formed between the deoxyribose, deoxyribose, and the phosphate. And uh, this creates continuous, continuous sugar phosphate backbone. So that's that. So we commonly hear the terminology, the term like sugar phosphate backbone of the nucleic acid. So this backbone, you know, work for DNA as well as the RNA. That basically run the same pattern. The only difference is that DNA use the deoxyribose as a sugar, the RNA, RNA right here, RNA use the ribose as a sugar. It doesn't have, yes, both OH here. It doesn't have the O here. So that's that. And then we need to know that another thing about DNA versus RNA is that DNA has double strength, right? So we need to put another strength to it. Here is the one strand, and this is another. It's two things you need to know. First is that these two strands pair with based on the pairing principle is called the complementary best pairs. G with C, A with T. G with D, G with C, A with T. G C A T. Okay, so that's the pattern. So that's the first thing you need. Second thing you need to know is that the direction of these two strands are opposite to each other. So the first strand, that's the right direction from the five prime to the three prime. The other will be from five prime that match to the three prime end to the three prime that match to the five prime end of the other string. So that's that. This is called anti-parallelism, that the direction of two strings are opposite to each other. So when we read one strand from five to three, five prime to three prime, um, and uh, and uh, the reading of the the other strand will be from the opposite end to the to the uh, five prime to three prime. It's always from five prime to three prime, but relatively that is an opposite direction. So that's that. And uh, that gave us another important uh, 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 knowledge is that um, to quantify or to identify the length of a gene uh, is identified as the number of that best pair. This is called a best pair because this is a nitrogenous base. So this is a base, this is space. So the base pair, because that pairs to each other right here, a pair, a pair, a pair. So the number of this 
best pair like stairs, right? The number of stairs. The number of the best pair define the length. Uh, so we can commonly hear if it's short, it would be like three best pair. That's very short gene. Uh, 10 best pair, 20 best pair. Or it could be pretty long. It could be the kilo best. We just skip the pairs. Kilo best, KB, or mega best. Uh, to describe the length of the DNA. Uh, for example, that a gene may be uh, 1,400 best pairs long, okay? So it could be the 12 KB or 2 MB, okay? And here showing you that GC, AT, R, complementary pairs. All right, so DNA is directional, that uh, two strands face in opposite direction, and uh, the direction is always five to three, five prime to three prime. But uh, these two strands are running to the opposite direction. If the one five prime to three prime is from this direction to this direction, the other will be from this direction to this direction. So that's that. So here, a little bit summary about the first like, portion we have with this lecture is that DNA is a double hex uh, complexes and uh, the backbone is the sugar phosphate backbone. Uh, and the nitrogenous base are paired based on the principle that we have the A to T, T to A, G to C, C to G. This is called the complementary pair. And both two strands of this DNA running to the opposite direction is called the anti parallelism So that's two very important concepts. All right, so it's just uh, you know foundation, so we know that. So the, the 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 first important topic that we are we are going to talk about is that the DNA, right? DNA basically serves only one important in, uh, uh, role in our in an organism, which is a genetic information. This genetic carry the genetic information. This genetic information need to be expressed because that is the like manual. And we need to follow that cell, need to follow that manual to do the work. So it need to be expressed. The second thing it need to be done is that it need to give this manual to their offsprings. So their offspring will do exactly the same thing as their parents did. So that basically two important function of the DNA. Like no matter what they do, they need to complete these two. First gene expression, that's the one we talked earlier. The second one is DNA replication. That's one we are going to talk about it today. We did talk about cell division earlier. We did talk about how cell duplicate its DNA, but we didn't talk it in detail. And that's what we are going to talk right now. So if you forgot about the DNA replication, I highly recommend to review cell division that uh, is one of our lecture in earlier and uh, the title will be the cell division and uh, very quickly you know review it again and come back here all right because in that talk we talk about cell division is one of the phase one of the stage in the cell cycle and so you should know cell cycle 
if you don't know SEO cycle, you know, I, I highly suggest you to just pause and uh, go back to listen to that lecture and then come back here. Now, if we know it, we should know that SEO cycle has G1, sorry, G1, sorry, yes. G1, S and G2. And this is the mitosis. Uh, cell may enter into cell cycle arrest. That means that they don't go through this cycle more. That is a differentiated cell that will be in the G0 stage. Now, if the cell continue to divide it, we will face the situation that we need to replicate DNA because cell gonna be split into two. So we need to prepare the gene code to have uh, two copies of it so they can be distributed to these two cells, right? And when does it happen? The DNA replication happens in the S phase. It's right here, S phase. So, so that's that. So here is what's happening in the S phase. During the S phase, DNA is going to be replicated. The way that DNA replication is that DNA is very long, right? As you would know that DNA is very long. The way it does is that this long strand will be, and this long strand has uh, formed this double strand hex, right? In order to make a duplication from one to the other, we need to open it up and then make a complementary copy based on the code over there. And uh, so here I show you one example that here is the double strand DNA and uh, we open it up, opens up, this code will be appeared and we will make C will have the nucleotide attached to it, T will have nucleotide attached to it, G will, A will, A, T, G, C, and this is the one that's gradually formed. Now from there, we could have the duplication. It was single one, we have two here. And so basically we will, it's not starting from the, the beginning of the of the end of the DNA, it's not from the end. It basically randomly opens up in the middle. And because DNA is pretty long, you basically just open up, just open up a little bit and just start to make a duplication over here. And uh, just extend from there. Each time we make a little bit chunk and each time we make a little bit chunk, each time we make a little bit chunk, each time we make a little bit chunk. So gradually we will make duplication. In the end, these two will be split away. So that's how it is done. So it's not like from the tail to the end or from the head to the tail. It will be two string here. We just open that little bit, open up, open that little bit, it's like, yeah. So everywhere will be like, have no idea what's happening here. But when they realize the whole DNA already being, you know, duplicated and ready to be split. So that's that. So we will have first the parent DNA molecule. Then second is that it will be opened up, unwinded because it's winded, unwinded and separated at several points. Here we show you one point. So to DNA, just open a little bit here. But the same thing happens in many points. We just use this one as the example, just open a little bit, right? And then we, when we open up, we have the opportunity to form the complementary pair to each strain. And then this complementary pair form this sugar phosphate backbone to mend 
each other, and then we have the duplicated double strand DNA. So DNA replication is a pieces by pieces process, okay? One piece, one point at a time. Uh, this piece, each time we create this piece is called a Okazaki fragment. Okazaki fragment. So each one we create a little piece that's and that ends it, it's not very long. We just have a little piece here, a little piece here. And in the end, we have all mented together to become two DNA. So each time their work is to complete an Okazaki fragment. All right. And to do so, we need several enzymes. First is called the uh, helicase that separates the hydrogen bond means that this double strand will be separated. And the primase is to initiate the loading of this complementary. Uh, this initial loading is the RNA primer, so it's not DNA, it's the RNA. RNA initiate it, and then once it launch on it, it's successfully launch on it, the connection from there will be completed by the DNA polymerase. Just by then you know that it's a DNA polymerase, make it a polymer. This DNA polymerase will continue with it to finish this length. This length is about 150 nucleotide long. This entire lens is called the ok Okazaki fragment. While DNA polymers continue, this one they will also replace the earlier RNA primer. So RNA primer launch on it, make sure that this is a good spot to initiate. DNA polymers come over here replace the RNA primer and also continue with this fragment. This fragment is called the Okazaki fragment. Uh, they follow the direction five to three, so every time they follow the five to three, then we have the ligase to connect them together to seal the sugar phosphate backbone of the of several of these Okazaki fragments. And then we have two duplicated DNA. So if we follow it step by step, here is the double strand DNA, it's winded. So first we need to open up just in the center or middle or nowhere, in middle of somewhere, open it up a little bit, right? It's like, it's very much like, a, you know, it's like a, your zip bag, right? Like zip bag, right? Let me see if I have a D bag. Hmm. I think I have a D bag. Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, so like a D bag, right? So it's like a D bag right here. So the way you open it is like a double strand right here. We have two strands and they are winded together. They are winded together. So the way we open it is we open somewhere in the center, not the beginning, not the end, but in center and open that a little bit, right? And the way that's our because DNA is very long, very long. So it's not from only one spot because that will take too much time. This enzyme opens up here, opens up here, opens up here. So it just opens up middle of somewhere and the several points all simultaneously, simultaneously get started and open up and duplicate it. So that's how it's done. 
All right, so we opened up a little bit. When we open up, we need to keep we need to keep it open. So this is this enzyme uh, head case, and uh, separate it and uh, keep it open. And then we have this uh, uh, primase. This is this purple thing. It's a primase. Primase will launch on it launch on it and uh, we will create this is the rna primer to it this green thing is an rna primer to it and then these growing will continue from five to three because here is the five to three on this dna strand um to grow a uh, opposite one it will be grow another pair one, the five will come in from here. So it will go in from this five end to the three end here. So it opens up, it will continue back off and this will continue going through it. And so basically when we open up, a duplication continue to build up on, on it. Um, this duplication is conducted by the DNA Polymers, this purple thing is DNA polymers. We'll continue to grow. Continue to grow. Um, this going this direction, this going to this direction. And uh, once it complete it, it's called a uh, or Kazaki fragment. So this one is done earlier. This one is a new one. So this one complete an Okazaki fragment. Then another, then these uh, DNA polymers will also replace this uh, RNA primer to replace it with the RNA. Oh, sorry, replace with the DNA. And then the enzyme, the ligase will seal this uh, sh uh, sugar phosphate backbone then we have an extended DNA duplication as a result. So now we have two DNA. So that's that. So to complete this process, we have several important enzymes. This is a list. We have the uh, helicase. This one opens up, this one initiate. They will identify a spot and opens up this double strand. And once it opens up, uh, the uh, we have these binding proteins to keep them open. And uh, uh, primates will launch on it to first use a temporary RNA polymer to build the primer. And then we have the DNA polymers to continue it to collect all this complementary pair of the nucleotide to the DNA strand. And then replace this RNA primer to be a, a Okazaki fragment. And then we use this ligase to join this different Okazaki fragments. Then we have this completed DNA double strand. So that's that. Uh, in the beginning, we will have this, um, this, uh, this is just commonly, commonly seen, we call it replication fork because it will open up. When it opens up, it looks like a Fork. If we don't see the other end, it will be look like a fork, right? Like two, like fork like that. Uh, one thing important to know is that there are hundreds of points simultaneously. Simultaneously, uh, conduct this replication. So it's not just one at a time. It's several points start all simultaneously. 
Beside DNA locally opened resemble fork, it's called a replication fork. Uh, the speed to conduct the DNA replication is about 50 basis per second. Just give you an idea that the speed of it. So that's the concept about the DNA replication. Uh, this replication um, is uh, is considered semi-conservative. It means that conservative means that um, it's uh, they keep this winding. Uh, so they don't break it open all together. They keep the winding basically. Uh, semi means that you, they still need to unwind it, but not entire the entire double strand. They unwind it only small part, so it's not completely unwinded. It's not completely unwinded, and the duplication. It's also not keep it all unwinded, and conduct the duplication. They unwind it but only small piece at a time. So it's called the semi-conservative. This duplication simultaneously happening at several points. Uh, and then pieces join together through these uh, ligase. Enzymes, there are several enzymes important to conduct this replication. Uh, we have primase to the initial site uh, to synthesize this short RNA primer. We have this DNA polymerase to complete this fragment, uh, Okazaki fragment. And then we have this ligase to seal this sugar phase backbone. So that's that. And the DNA synthesis is in the direction from five prime to three prime. So that is the DNA replication. The next step is that, okay, now we know DNA replicate, but how can we cause DNA damage? And if there is damage, how can we repair it? This thing happens all the time. So DNA, rep DNA damage and the DNA replication is part of our physiological process because DNA damage can cause by natural metabolic process. So we have the cellular metabolism can cause the DNA, DNA damage. So it's not like only happens rarely, this happens quite often. Of course, we also have the events that the, uh, the, uh, the environment can cause the DNA damage. The common one and the, has been thoroughly studied one is the UV light. So this UV light is ultraviolet uh, uh, light. Uh, this is light that we don't, we, it's not visible from us, this light is commonly, uh, uh, it's uh, the most commonly exists in, is under the sun because sun emission and uh, this UV light uh, can penetrate through our atmosphere and uh, can, can, uh, uh, can, can, can shine on, on, our, on our body and uh, our skin cells will be the first one to receive this UV light. And that UV light uh, has, has the energy to cause the damage to our, 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 our DNA. So that's one we will talk about. Uh, the, uh, and also the ionizing radiation, this ionizing Ionizing radiation means that this radiation is strong enough can cause a 
atom to become ionized. It means that the energy will make it one of the electron to be exposed or two electron to be exposed, make this atom to become ionized. So that's the ionized radiation. This is considered a higher energy than the UV light. UV light is not an ionizing radiation. It's that range doesn't cause the atom to uh, to 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 lose any electron yet, but if this energy is of this photon is strong enough, it can cause the atom to lose an electron, and then causing it ionized. This ionizing radiation commonly seen in the uh, the radiation that is even stronger energy, uh, such as the X ray the gamma ray, so those are the uh, higher energy. Uh, just very quickly, that in our uh, like environment, we, 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 we accept the, the, the sun. We hardly have, ex ha have the chance to expose to the UV light and ionizing radiation though. People concerned about the, say, the common wave we encounter in our daily life is say microwave uh, or cell phone. People concerned about those. However, they, their, their energy is way lower than these two. Uh, the energy of microwave and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the cell phone, cell phone operates in the microwave range. So those are like radio. Their frequency basically, basically in the same range as the radio, uh, FM radio, AM radio in that range. And uh, that range is relatively pretty safe. Of course, there are some studies saying that uh, the duration, the like time, to get exposed into that even low energy, but maybe the high concentration, prolonged exposure may cause some issue. But just in terms of the DNA or cellular damage, um, it's way, 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 way safer than, 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 than the sun, for example, than the UV light. So that's that. So you can be, you can be okay. If, uh, there are several other toxins in our environment are way more toxic than the microwave, than the cell phone. Even if 5G is still in the microwave range, okay? So you can be safe. If we're really concerned about the, the effects to your health, you know, you, you, you should concern several other things like eat less sugar, don't smoke, sleep well, and uh, uh, don't eat the processed food. That's, it, that, that, that's probably even more important than the concern over the cell phone. Or, of course, driving with cell phone is dangerous, but it's not chemical, it's attention, you know, it's a distraction. All right, so that's that. Chemical exposure. Uh, this one is commonly seen as this uh, chemical that can cause the mutation. Uh, a well-known one is some like a uh, dye. Uh, and uh, uh, some, you know, color dye that people use to dye their hair. Uh, and that's well known to can cause the mutation to the DNA. Also through the replication, and that's why we talk about it after replication, because through the replication, we may not replicate it correctly, and that could cause the DNA damage. So that's the causes of the DNA damage. And consequence is that there is maybe two, three consequences. One is cell die, 
right? This DNA damage is so badly that cell cannot function and the cell will die. So that's one way. Uh, apoptosis is a term called programmed cell death that the cell realize that they cannot sustain this condition furthermore. And so they will conduct a suicide to kill itself. But the way that it kills itself is to kill it in a way that it doesn't, it, it affects the environment. So the neighboring cell will be okay. Uh, otherwise, if this death is a disease or caused by other events, they may release the chemicals that can affect the neighboring cell. Apoptosis is a way that the cell death the shrink and the bee digests by itself. So they can keep other cells to be safe. We can have a DNA repair, right? So there are several ways that we can repair it. We can conduct this uh, 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 transcriptional program activity. This one will cause you know, some gene expression uh, and uh, it can also activate the uh, checkpoints through the cell cycle. Remember that we have G1S, G2, and mitosis. In each phase, we have designed the checkpoints to make sure that cell is okay. So with this damage, it will trigger the checkpoint and the checkpoint will induce several other things. It can induce the apoptosis. It can induce DNA repair. It can induce the transcriptional uh, uh, reaction to it. So that's that. So this one summarizes that DNA damage, the source can be varied, but this is not rare. Uh, even like regular metabolic process uh, we can cause these uh, uh, free radicals can cause DNA damage. So we repair the DNA all the time. It's not rare. Uh, this, this could be caused by the replication error. It could be the UV light. It could be the ionizing radiation, uh, toxin, uh, mutagenic chemicals, virus, right? This can also cause the DNA damage. Now, what's the, so here is the example that UV light. How does it, this is uh, one of the uh, 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 thoroughly studied topic that, that UV, U, sorry, UV light can cause DNA damage. So how does it cause the DNA damage? So this line is strong, but not too strong. So DNA has double strength, right? Two strength. And uh, so this is strong enough to cause the detachment, cause this hydrogen bond to become detached, to become broken. So two strength will be detached, will be detached, yes, detached from each other. And then we will have this connection formed by two uh, uh, pyrimidines. And uh, typically happens in the thymine. So this is the thymine. We will form a bond. And this bond will be pretty strong. That's UV lights and, uh, and this bond will be here. And that will prevent this strand to be connected with the other strand. So this could be the problem, right? Then we, 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 we distort the DNA. DNA is kinked. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, so that is the error. That is the damage that's caused by the UV light. UV light has three major bands or two major bands. One is the UVA, which is 
lower energy and the UVB, which is higher energy. UVB is one that can cause this damage, okay? Both UVA and UVB are invisible. Those are in the range of beyond the visible light. But UVA is one near the visible light and that's more, that's a band, that's a range that's not causing the uh, DNA damage. But the further away from this visible range, the one is the UVB and that is the one can cause this single strand damage. And the damage is to form this bond between two thymine. And this is called uh, to form this thymine, thymine dimer by UV radiation. So several terminology you learned today. Uh, thymine dimer. Okay, so this one and uh, so this UV light uh, form this these two yellow are the thymine, thymine dimer, and the thymine dimer is pretty strong, so it will keep this strand to become kinked. Uh, and uh, and here example is the thymine dimer that this is two. I mean, uh, this one is the uh, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate backbone. And this is the nitrogenous base. This nitrogenous base happens to be two thymine connect, uh, uh, located next to each other. If there is UV light, it will, and this one has another um, pair on the other hand, and but this UV light will break this hydrogenous bond and uh, will form a dimer, a very strong bond here. So that's the thing, okay? I mean dimer. So that's the UV light cause the single strand. If the radiation is stronger, it will break the double strand. So the typical one is the ionizing radiation. It will break this double strand. To break the sub double strand, basically it breaks the sugar sulfate backbone. This is sugar sulfate backbone. And, uh, and uh, the repairment is to mint this sugar sulfate backbone. So it's, it's, it's possible to replace it, repair it. Uh, however, if it's not correctly repaired, this could cause cell death because now DNA is broken. Uh, say this two piece is too far away. If it's too far away, cell may die. That's one thing. This two piece may rearrange it to attach to other chromosome, to the homologous pair. And that can become to generate a new chromosome and that could lead to the cancerous cell. This genetic rearrangement includes deletion. Maybe this piece just disappeared. This strand is totally disappeared. This strand is translocated to other homologous pair or fused with some other chromosome. So that's that. So that's the typical damage, uh, single strand damage caused by the single strand damage is not entirely broken, but induced this kink from this timing dimer caused by the UV radiation, or it could be the double strand damage caused by the ionizing radiation. And then there is this one is not the nitrogen is based damage, is the uh, sugar sulfate, sorry, sugar phosphate backbone breakdown, breaks, double strain damage. The repairment, we have several like known mechanism to repair this one. 
Uh, for example, uh, we can have a excision, excision a repair. Basically, we just take it out and put a new one in. Very much like a decoration, just cut it off and replace this one. For example, we have this one here. We just chunk it out because this one is, you know, it's damaged. And we, we, we can replace it based on this, this template and put a new one in. If this point is short only like five nucleotide, nucleotides, then this is a nucleotide uh, uh, excision repair. If it's long, then it's a longer excision repair. So we can have the nucleotide uh, excision repair if it's, or base if it's long, excision repair. But it's all that like, chuck it off and then replace it. We can have a mismatch repair. Uh, we can have a, a, this one is not in human, a false fall re, uh, sorry, false, Photo reactivation, photo reactivation, basically that we can take the energy from the thermal energy to conduct the chemical change to conduct this repair. We can have a DNA tolerance. This is another way that when during that DNA polymers, when they see a damaged piece of the nucleotide, we can skip it and uh, still build a no, normal looking replication. So that's one way of doing that. And uh, we can have double strand repair. Basically, we just join these two broken pieces together. So that's that. So here is a list of the uh, typical repair mechanism of the DNA damage. Uh, if it's a single strand damage, we can have the excision repair, just chuck it off and uh, put it back. And to put it back, we have the template on the other strand because only single strand is injured. The other strand can provide the, the base that we know what's the correct nucleotide to put back to there. We could have the mismatch re re repair. If it's mismatched, we just take it out, just go one and put the correct match to it. Double strand damage, if it's double strand, it's all disconnected. We just join them together, chromosome join. DNA damage, tolerance. So this one is, if their single nucleotide is either the damage can be several can be several type. It could be the the uh, deamination. This could happen. Uh, there are some uh, uh, this nitrogen space to be affected by different oxidative reaction. And so 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 when we we can and it will appear like it's mismatched. T is not with A, A is not with T, or G is not with C, which is like last time we talked about this uh, uh, cytosine uh, methylation. Cytosine methylation, DNA. Cytosine methylation, C become U, and uh, so it's not matched. So we can use this mechanism to fix that mismatched uh, pair. or DNA damage tolerance. So when we replicate it, we can just skip that injured one and still complete that replication. All right, so let me, let's see, uh, the rest will be the, uh, the mechanism of this one. These are uh, different repair mechanism. For example, the excision repair. So this is the one we already learned that 
we have this uh, timing uh, timer, then we basically just cut, cut it off and using this template to put in the correct one and to join them together. So that's that. There are two types. It could be the nucle nucleotide and the base, depending on the lens. If it's nucleotide, up to 30 nucleotides, uh, it could be caused by several enzymes, could be the UV, could be the ox oxidative damage. Uh, there are a lot of proteins are involved to cause this uh, process. They function together as a structure called repair rosal. And if it's short, it's one to five bases. It's called the base excision repair. And this one is not as damaged badly as this uh, uh, this, uh, in this case, uh, a longer repair. And with this one, it's UV light and oxidative, bed, ox oxidative damage. This one is caused by this um, uh, oxid oxidative damage only. So that's that. And the mismatched repair. Uh, so if this two is not matched, enzyme can come here because we have one template, we can fix it. Another one is the DNA damage tolerance that here we are going to replicate the DNA. Now with this one, this one is an X. We don't know what's that. So we still can just randomly pick, put one here and still complete it. So we just ignore it and just to our best guess to put it back here. This has the, even though we can continue to keep this cell, because this code probably not that important, the important code in, sorry, the protein coded gene, only 2% of our chromosome. So if we just want to throw an entire cell due to one mismatch, the chance is that we probably, it doesn't probably work it. So we can continue it. This is called probably not that important. 89% is not that important. 98% is not that important. But if this happened to be an important one, this will create a mutation. We can keep it here, just ignore it, or we can excite it out with excision this is not actually helping because now we have the frame shift. If this is not that important, this is not important anyway. If this is important, a frame reading frame shift can alter the entire reading frame and that can cause the reading very messed up because three codon is used to produce one amino acid. And now you shift one, it totally shift everything. So. So this one is, would be the error free, could be the error free that it won't cause the reading shift. Uh, so at least the other strand can be still be useful. Uh, perhaps we can read the, uh, doing the translation, transcription from that strand, not this strand. If we remove it, this would be bad because if we, we, we can read, we need to read it from either strand, this will be a reading frame shift, and uh, uh, that could be the uh, could be uh, caused uh, the transcription translation to become uh, a totally like incorrect. So that summarizes it. Summarize the DNA damage mechanism and the DNA repair mechanism, and. Uh, uh, key concept include that um, many enzymes can locate and correct errors in DNA. The UV light damage, in particular the, the UVB, uh, to cause the damage is thoroughly uh, studied. We know that it can cause the uh, 
uh, pyrimidine dimer. And uh, then we can um, uh, repair it. And uh, uh, mismatch repair can correct this non complementary base. Uh, we can also cut it out. Uh, we can also have the uh, uh, if this damage caused the uh, sugar phosphate backbone damage, we can repair and seal it, uh, chromosome joint. Uh, we can also ignore that damage through this DNA polymers, just ignore that this DNA damage tolerance. And uh, this would be okay, keep this cell alive. 98% or so, this probably won't cause any damage, which is high chance that we can keep it. But if it happens to be the 2% one, then it can be an issue. Um, abnormal repair, gene can cause disorders and, uh, um, and the possibility to cause cancer. So that's why cancer is age dependent. Uh, like even though it's only 2% chance that we ignore it, it's okay, but we accumulate it multi multiple times. There are many mechanisms that our body can against, can kill the tumor if it did develop into tumor. So that's that, but still, you know, cancer is uh, one of the leading cause of death because human have prone to develop cancer. And a lot of research is going on to find a way to treat cancer. All right, so that ends it. Let me know if you have any question. I just want to make sure that I say it correctly because I think I say it obviously that the excision, sorry, excision repair here. Excision repair, best excision repair is for a short length. I say opposite, say so this is short. Best excision repair is for the short damage. Nucleotide excision repair is for a longer one. So that's the, just make sure that, that uh, don't, don't get confused on those. All right then, that's it. See you later. Let me know if you have any question. Thank you guys.